Good evening, I'm Bo Williams, and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories. The biggest of those is no doubt the weather. The storm team telling us to be weather aware at the end of the week that's already seen flash flooding here and up in Kentucky. Take a look at some of this video. Chief Meteorologist Ken Weathers is joining us right now to kind of get us up to date on everything that's been going on. And Ken, I, I know we've been weather aware throughout the day. Hopefully yeah. that's going to come to an end. Hopefully things are going to start to quiet down as we get ready to head into uh, Saturday. Yeah, Bo, I do think a couple more hours and we're going to be in a much better shape than we are. The good news is we actually had a bit of a break in some of the steadier rainfall after this morning up to about midday and the cloud cover kept things from getting out of hand. But still, as you mentioned, we'll stay weather aware. We've still got a flood watch in effect for some areas. Darker green here. This goes until 10 o'clock, so it's especially along and north of the I-40 corridor. Let's talk about what's out there now. Starting to see some moderate to heavy rain right on the Roan County border with Knox and Anderson. Also some showers southern Campbell County and stretching up into portions of Granger and Jefferson County. So wider perspective here. This is all ahead of a cold front that's slowly drifting southward. It's going to take its time, but once we're past sunset, we're losing a lot of the energy from these, and this front will drop southward over the next couple of hours. This is 9 o'clock. Still could be some moderate rain south, but by midnight, I really think most areas are starting to dry out, and overnight towards daybreak tomorrow, other than some patchy fog, it looks like a quiet start to our Saturday, which is a great thing. In fact, the flood risk looks much lower for tomorrow. And notice southeast Kentucky, southwest Virginia, not even in one. Though I think most areas will be dry up there tomorrow, which is great, but not the entire weekend. I'll explain coming up. All right, Kim, we'll check back with you coming up here in a little bit. Well, next on our Big 7, parts of southeast Kentucky devastated by flooding. Chances are you've seen some of this video. Governor Andy Bashir says at least 16 people are now dead, and he warns the number could double. And it's easy to see why in this drone video. Houses and businesses underwater in Heinemann, Kentucky. Take a look at some of this video. Uh, the town's fire department said this morning that its crews have been searching, checking one home after another, marking them off as they go. Governor Bashir said today that a number of the people killed are children or the elderly. And families with relatives in those areas are worried. Everybody out there that is scared, that uh, can't get in touch with one of their relatives. Uh, cell phones are, are down in so many of these regions. Let me tell you, I know how you feel. I couldn't get in touch with members of my family after the tornadoes. So please continue to hope, continue to pray, and we will try to connect as many people as possible. And here's a terrifying image from Perry County where a house was pushed off its foundation. Rescues have been tough with high water blocking roads, leaving people trapped, adding to the troubles. Heavy rain kept coming down at times today, and the terrain doesn't help either with damaged areas sitting close to creeks in narrow valleys. Now, one of those people needing rescue sharing her story, Patricia, uh, Patricia Colombo from Jackson, Kentucky. She needed help after her car flooded while she was trying to drive home yesterday. But I thought it was only about two, three inches and I could go slowly through it. And I landed in the middle, my car stopped, stalled out. And then I didn't know what to do. I just kind of went into a panic. Probably about uh, a minute, two minutes at the max, water started flooding into my car. Rescuers in a helicopter spotted her car, then called in a team on a four-wheeler, eventually having to wade out to Colombo. Well, some of those rescuers are coming from right here in Tennessee, several from Blunt County. That's our next big story for you. Tennessee National Guard members flying Black Hawk helicopters from Friendsville to help with rescue missions in those flooded parts of Kentucky. You're looking at pictures shared by the Guard of the crews already doing that work. National Guard crews expect to be there at least a few days with flight paramedics and swift water rescue experts. Yesterday, they pulled more than 20 people out of those high flood waters. A lot of areas up there have not been surveyed yet to see the extent of the damage and have any stranded personnel. Uh, so some of the aircraft were being tasked out to directly to emergency calls. Some of them were just surveying areas. And then uh, one of the air crews uh, saw what looked like some distressed people on the ground and landed. And sure enough, picked up uh, somebody that had been swept away by some flood waters and was injured and took them to the hospital. More Tennesseans stepping up from Nashville, the Church of Christ disaster relief effort. Today, volunteers busy packing trucks with supplies. They'll head out tomorrow, we understand. Back here in Knoxville, the American Red Cross says it sent one worker from its East Tennessee chapter to serve as a shelter manager. Our next Big 7 story answers about a tragedy. We're learning that the woman found dead beneath Anna Keista's chairlift in Gatlinburg jumped 
taking her own life. That's according to Gatlinburg police after hearing witness accounts from last night. Investigators say she was a 40-year-old woman from Laverne in Middle Tennessee, southeast of Nashville. Meanwhile, Anna Kista says it operated the lift long enough to get other guests off before then shutting down for the investigation. Buses then brought those guests down from the mountain. Anna Kista says its chair lift was inspected 60 days ago and is in safe working order. The state's elevator inspector, which has jurisdiction over chair lifts, was in Gatlinburg today putting the equipment and operation under scrutiny. Anna Kista says the inspector gave the go-ahead to reopen the lift. The park plans to do that tomorrow. And there's another death report in our Big 7 story list for you tonight. A woman is dead after being hit by a car in West Knoxville. KPD tells us it happened around 7.30 last night along Kingston Pike at the intersection with Mohican Street. Uh, this is in the Hamburg area that you're looking at here, this map behind me. Now, witnesses reportedly told police that the woman was hit while crossing the street outside of a crosswalk. Officers say the driver of that car stayed at the scene. The woman, we still don't, don't know her name tonight, was taken to UT Medical Center. Police say it did not seem at first like her injuries were life-threatening, but staff later told officers she had been pronounced dead. KPD's crash reconstruction team is looking into what happened. COVID-19 is back in the Big 7 tonight with case numbers up once again. They've grown so much that Knox County and most of the counties in our area are back to the high COVID-19 level on the Centers for Disease Control's county-by-county county map. It's the point where the CDC recommends people wear a mask indoors in public. According to the CDC, Knox County's positive case rate is 320 cases per 100,000 people. A majority of counties across the state, and really most of the South, are now in that orange shade. Along with the masking, the CDC says people in high community-level counties should stay current with their vaccinations. The Knox County Health Department offered that opportunity today with a free COVID vaccine clinic at Victor Ash Park. Vaccines are available anywhere right now, pretty much, you know, your local pharmacy, uh, even Walmart and stuff like that. But just giving it a more uh, friendly feeling, a more easier way to get access, you know, no line, you just come out, or at a park. So it's very fresh, you know, having those types of things to reach out to minority people where they don't have to feel like they have to go into an office building or feel like, you know, being judged or anything like that. Of course, we will keep you updated on more of these free cl vaccine clinics. Rounding out our Big 7 list for you, a back-to-school season tradition. We are 17 hours into a tax-free weekend when Tennessee gives everyone the chance to skip sales tax on items like school supplies, clothing, and computers. This year, it is happening against the backdrop of what feels like ever-increasing inflation, up 9.1 percent from where prices were at this time in 2021. Today, that 2022 fact of life was on the minds of shoppers we spoke with. It's been horrible trying to get all these school supplies and the schools wanting everything they want, and it's been outrageously priced. We are expecting the clothing, the school supplies to be uh, uh, higher, uh, significantly higher. I don't know if it's going to result in us getting less of clothing and school supplies, but um, definitely aware of it, and it's, it's on our minds. Don't forget the tax holiday isn't restricted to in-store shoppers. You can also buy online, but keep in mind there are limits. Clothing and school supplies over $100 do not qualify, and neither do computers over $1,500. Also, computers doesn't mean TVs, phones, or appliances. Tax-free weekend, by the way, wraps up Sunday night at 1159.